Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about Near and whether or not the new USN stablecoin that's getting released on the Near network is a ticking time bomb. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates, better risk indicators, and more. So the main thing I want to discuss today is the new USN stablecoin that is being released on Near and whether it might pose a systemic risk to the near network just like we saw with the very unfortunate events that transpired with the terra ecosystem i think we're all very much familiar with what happened here you know terra being one of the premier projects in crypto top 10 crypto uh, asset went to effectively zero in an incredibly short amount of time and i think now you know, justifiably, everyone is getting incredibly skeptical of any kind of algorithmic stablecoin after we saw this absolute implosion of the Terra space. And now, obviously, for Near, you know, this is pretty bad timing because one of the things that have been leading Near to pump in more recent days, but then obviously we fell off. We fell off here more recently was the announcement that they were going to be releasing their own. In this case, semi-algorithmic, I'll get to that in a minute, Stablecoin USN, that would also offer a decent amount of yield on it. Not as high as the 20% um, kind of continuous yield that was being offered on Anchor. Get to a little bit more about how that mechanism is thought to work here in a minute. So the question, though, is, you know, is this going to be a problem for Nier? So, you know, with this Stablecoin launching, is it designed in a way... That will open up near to the same systemic risk that luna had in the terra ecosystem or is it less of a concern so let's dig into this a little bit because i think this is important for evaluating not just the viability of usn but also frankly is near gonna face some kind of implosion in the future if usn were to get big and then blow up Let's talk a little bit about how this is all proposed to work. So I'm, I'm going to start with this um, Medium article here that describes a little bit of the overview. Then I'm going to move over to the white paper to discuss some things a bit more specifically. So the thing that's important to note that's a little bit different between how UST and Terra and Luna worked and how um, USN is proposed to work. So the way that Luna worked, if you're not familiar in, in UST, it was basically that at any time you could burn a dollar's worth of Luna to mint one dollar's worth of UST, and then vice versa, you could burn one dollar's worth of UST to mint, create one dollar's worth of Luna. And the issue there, and what ended up happening in this death spiral we saw, was that in instances where UST would lose its peg, it would fall below the dollar, then if a lot of people all at once were trying to get out of UST and convert it back into Luna, basically, a bank run that's so fast that the arbitragers aren't allowed able to get UST back up to its peg, that UST is kind of stuck trading below its peg. The idea what will happen then is that it'll hurt Luna's price because every single time someone transacts out of UST, you know, they burn one UST to build to mint a dollar's worth of Luna, they're increasing the supply of Luna, and then they're just dumping it on the market, which drives the price of Luna down. And then basically every UST you're burning as the price of Luna goes down becomes worth more and more Luna, right? You know, you can see this just happen if we just look at the chart here. You know, when um, UST or when Luna was worth $100, let's say, you know, you'd burn one UST, you get one hundredth of a Luna. But then when Luna is all the way down here, where is it? Here we go. At a dollar, burning one UST mints an entire Luna. So you can see that as the price of Luna fell, people who were getting out of UST, you know, burning one UST to get one um, dollar's worth of Luna, they were creating more and more Luna all the way down. So, you know, when it was at $100, you'd only be creating one hundredth of a Luna. When Luna's worth a dollar, you're creating a whole Luna. And then as, you know, when Luna's worth one cent, you're creating a hundred Luna for every UST you're burning. So it creates this exponential inflation effect, which then just kind of compounds upon itself that you're just kind of exponentially increasing the supply of Luna, and then that's going to then obviously tank the price in addition to all the continued selling pressure that's going to exist as people are trying to exit UST. So that's how that death spiral happens with the mechanics of Luna. It was kind of, frankly, designed this way. It did exactly what it was, how it was designed. And it was a kind of an inherent systemic risk to 
the asset with UST. It's one of those things that unfortunately not enough people understood this systemic risk that existed with that setup. So it's important to talk then about how USN is different to assess whether or not it it has the same kind of risks for near um, as it would be implemented. So what's different about um, USN is that it's not the same in that you do not, when you burn a USN, you do not create new near. So you do not change the supply of near when you burn one USN. All you're doing is there's what they're calling kind of a central bank, more or less, for um, US, USN or uh, centralized, I forget the exact term, but it's essentially a, a treasury, a, a central bank that exists for near or for USN. And the idea is that when you put in near into that uh, smart contract, you put in, let's say, a dollar's worth of near, you get one USN back out. And then when you put one USN, one USN in, that gets burned and you get one dollar's worth of near out. But importantly, you're not creating new near. You're not creating a dollar's worth of near. You're just simply pulling out near that already existed in that centralized bank. And what's going on with that near that's in that centralized kind of bank is it's being staked. And essentially what's going to happen, the idea of yield on this stable coin would be that the, the staking reward for the near that's in the centralized, that central bank, that's you know basically just being staked to secure the near network, that's being paid back out to USN holders. So you're essentially just kind of, instead of just holding the near and staking it yourself, you're putting it in to get the stable coin and then getting the um, the APY out. So essentially you're, you're shielding yourself theoretically from the downside risk in that you know USN will, will should you know in, in the way it's supposed to work maintain its a value at around basically right around one dollar you know as stable as a stable coin can be but then you also don't get the upside um either so if near were to be pumping you wouldn't be realizing that um that profit because you're just sitting in a stable coin so that's kind of the idea the trade-off there it's getting the yield but then not getting the upside of the downside volatility with near now, obviously, with any kind of algorithmic stablecoin like this, that sounds a little bit worrying because one of the, the proposed mechanisms to keep USN stable to a dollar is through arbitrage. And that's really what, what was working for Luna. The idea being that anytime US, UST was below a um, dollar, the idea would be that people should be going to buying up USN on the market to then convert it into a dollar's worth of Luna and then keep the profit. So Luna was kind of acting as that back that liquidity backdrop for UST, but then of course being uh, susceptible to this kind of runaway effect in the right conditions. So how do, will the USNs, um, will this arbitrage system work and is it as susceptible to these runaway issues? So let's move over to the, the white paper to look at this more specifically. So this is showing a flow chart of basically what's supposed to happen um, when in this case, the, the USN falls below its peg. So let's say it's trading at 99 cents. The idea would be that um, some person would notice this, some arbitrager would notice this, they would buy USN from an exchange at 99 cents um, each. Then what they would do is they would send, so let's say they, they paid $99 to buy um, 100 USN, they would then send that 100 USN into a smart contract that would then directly one-to-one -one redeem that 100 USN for $100 worth of near that's in this, this decentralized bank. I guess, yeah, that's what they call it. Decentralized bank, not central bank. You know, obviously crypto is supposed to be decentralized. And then what they would do is they then um, would then sell that near $100 worth of near and then they keep the, the profit, in this case, $1. And the idea is that arbitragers do this on a large scale and that helps keep the peg. Because then, you know, the opposite would happen if it ever got above where if it ever got to be above the peg, you would buy $100 worth of near, send it in, get 100 um, USN back, and then sell that for this above peg price, and then that would drive the price back down. So that's how this arbitrage is supposed to work. Now, is this susceptible to a death spiral, though? That's what's, I think, the critical question. Now, there's a, one thing I want to mention before I get into that. So what they're going to be doing with USN is that they're going to start it off as being kind of a double collateralized asset. And the way they're going to do that is this decentralized bank is not just going to have near in it, it's also going to have USDT, you know, being a separate centralized stable coin. And so the, for the first billion dollars worth of USN that's minted or that's created, they're going to have one USDT backing it. So there's going to be one billion USDT in this decentralized bank to backstop the first billion dollars worth 
of USN. So that does provide some security, right? Because there's at least at the beginning a direct, you know, one-to-one -one backing with another stable coin. So the idea would be that any kind of bank run, people will just convert into USDT. And as long as USDT doesn't depeg, which, you know, hopefully that wouldn't happen. You know, that's a whole separate issue. But assuming it wouldn't depeg, then that would help backstop it. But let's kind of imagine that we're in an environment where that reserve has been depleted. So let's imagine we're way into the future, you know, uh, basically through the, the functioning of the system, there's, you know, not a whole lot of USDT um, back. Let's say we're in a protracted bear market, and then over time that gets depleted out of the system. We just have near that's supposed to be backstopping USN. Could there be a death spiral? Well, yes and no. It would there could be a bank run. It just would not be a death spiral as bad as as Luna because of the different the way the system works, which is different than um, Luna. And the main difference here is that with Luna, you were creating new Luna every time you burned a UST, and that could create infinitely increasing or um, inflating supply. And that's what happened with Luna. You know, Luna went from um, you know just uh, billions of Luna circulating to over or to now trillions of Luna circulating because of this death spiral type of mechanic or, or capability in there. Now that can't happen in near in the same degree because when you're, when you're redeeming one USN for $1 worth of near, you're not actually minting new near. You're just taking near out of this decentralized, decentralized bank. And so the way that this bank is supposed to work is that there's always supposed to be as much near in it as there is USN um, outside. And so really the kind of risk to near would be that however big, however, whatever the market cap of USN is, if there was just suddenly a, a run on the bank, essentially everyone's trying to get out of USN. So let's say that USN depegs, everyone's trying to get the heck out of Dodge. Essentially, whatever the market cap of USN is at the time, that's kind of the amount of near that might get dumped onto the market as people are trying to get in. So let's say, for example, the market cap of USN is $5 billion. Yeah, the idea would be that kind of the worst case scenario for near would that people would then run on the decentralized bank they would pull out that entire five billion dollars worth of near as quickly as they can they would dump it on the open market that would create five billion dollars worth of sell pressure on the near there but once the decentralized bank is exhausted then there's no more sell pressure that could possibly happen so really, you know, it's kind of limited to how much near happens to be in the decentralized bank. And then once that decentralized bank would kind of break, then nothing would happen. But certainly that would still be pretty disastrous for near, right? So the, the larger USN would be, the larger that risk would risk would be, right? You know, the, the whatever the market cap of USN is, the larger that is, in the event of some kind of big bank run, then that would be the kind of risk of, of quick selling pressure on near, which, you know... You know, if Near got to be some massive market cap asset, then maybe that would just be a drop in the bucket at five billion. But then, if if Near is a massive market cap asset, USN to, um, market cap is probably a lot larger as well. And so that would be, in the way I'm reading this, a risk. Now, again, in the beginning, it's less of a risk because there's going to be that USDT billion dollars worth of USDT that's going to be in here backing it up. And so at the beginning, there's going to be that double collateralization. So within the first billion dollars of market cap, USN won't be subject to that kind of bank run to the same degree. Or at least a bank run would not um, be as likely to tank the price of near because people would probably just be pulling out as, you know, USDT. Um, yeah. So that would be, you know, there'd be more, more stabilization there. But there's, there is the bank run capability. And that's that's the thing I wanted to point out here um, as well, is that there is that possibility that can happen. Now, the other thing that's important to note about how this whole system is going to work is that if we look down at the way that the treasury management's actually going to happen, you know, the there's they want to keep uh, the same dollar amount of near in the decentralized bank as the USN that's out in circulation. And so the way that they're going to end up trying to do this is that basically if the amount of if the dollar value of near drops below the number of outstanding usn that's out there they're going to sell usdt to the open market to buy more near so that's why for that first billion dollars there's not really that as much of a risk because if you know uh people are trying to get out of usn and there's less dollar value of near in the decentralized bank than there's usn out there the treasury is going to sell usdt to buy in more near to, to equalize the dollar value so that there's an equal amount of near in dollar values in these decentralized bank as there's USDSN out in circulation. But 
if if and when this dries up, then that's not the case. And that's where that kind of bank run could happen. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is that this is going to sort of, in some ways, potentially provide some interesting effects on near, depending on what near's price is doing. That for that first billion um, USN that's out there, if near is in a downtrend, what's going to happen is that they're going to be selling USDT onto the market to buy near. I actually create buying pressure for near as near would be going down throughout that first billion. But then if near is pumping, if near is moving up in value, it's actually going to be selling um, near out into um, the open market because again, it wants to keep the value of near. Um, yeah. Uh, value of near to be equal to the value of USN out there so they can sell near out there. Um, and then they would actually end up bringing back in USDT when that happens. So that's one of the, of the things that, that, you know, would just be have to keep an eye on is that, you know, in a bull market, the, the reserve, you know, centralized or the decentralized bank would actually be accruing USDT because they're going to be selling near out back in the UST, uh, SDT to keep the values equal. But then if it's in a downtrend, they're going to sell the USDT back in the near. So what's the overall assessment? This is a lot that I just went over. It's just kind of a technical uh, uh, running through. But the, the key elements of what I talked to I've talked about here is that a bank run is possible here. And I think it's especially possible in an event where USN gets larger than the initial kind of backstop of USDT and we're at a bear market where that USDT has been all been sold out to keep buying in more near to keep its value equal to the amount of USN that's been minted. And so really I would see this as being quite risky in a protracted bear market towards the end, right? Or as as we move further in that if you if you exhaust that billion dollars worth of backstop, then you know, you could see a run on the decentralized bank which could end up tanking near by whatever value you know the market cap of usn is so it wouldn't be as dramatic as this most likely i think near would still be able to survive something like that but it would still be bad it would still be quite bad now the other thing that we have to keep in mind with all of this is after the debacle with with luna and terra are is that much money even going to flow into usn at all because you know the smaller one of these projects is the less risk it has to the in this case near you know the, the if usn only ever becomes let's say a hundred million dollar asset and and at worst case scenario that's going to be a hundred million dollars worth of sell pressure for near you know, near should be able to absorb that i i would think you know that would be you know most likely to happen and if usn was even smaller than that let's say it was only 20 million dollars you know and then certainly um it, it, near would be able to absorb any kind of bank run that would happen the real risk is that something like UST and Luna happens where the market cap for USN gets to be, you know, uh, approaching the market cap of near or, or quite a big fraction of the market market cap of near. And that would be where some kind of a bank run in bearish market could absolutely tank it. So that's my reading. That's my understanding of the way the system works and the risks that um, exist. You know, please feel free to, to comment if there's a nuance that I missed in my my description here but that's my understanding of the way the system works and the inherent risks and that's just where you know if you're thinking about getting into usn i just think it's important to know the risk of it because we've seen how not understanding the risks can be absolutely devastating to folks and people can lose a lot of money very rapidly so that's just what what uh, the way i see it that at the very beginning as long as there's usdt backstopping it i think the risk is quite a bit more minimum it's really just just tying it to how stable you think USDT is. But then after that would be exhausted, especially in kind of more bearish markets, that's where I'd see some more concern. All right, hopefully this video was useful. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, um, give the video a like, that really helps us out with the algorithm. And go follow us on Twitter. We put a lot of updates about our indicators and more over there.